the Standard Digital here at the Standard Group. And he's going to talk to us about um, electronic evidence, yeah? Well, when we talk about electronic evidence, what are we even talking about? Uh, we're talking about uh, certain incidences. Mm -hmm. We're talking about situations. We're talking about incidences yeah. and circumstances surrounding a particular occurrence. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's with regards to getting an information that is needed, mm -hmm. an intelligence information yeah. that is need needed for a certain cause. It can be for a jurisprudential system, or it can just be for actionable cause, maybe stopping a certain crime or working on certain, s something. Okay, yeah. so um, this electronic evidence, are you mm -hmm. able to show us exactly what you mean? Because you're using very difficult words like jurisprudence. Not everybody might understand words like that. But um, just to put it in simple terms for people who would like to know, when you talk about electronic evidence, mm -hmm. is it just about, oh, you know what, I really need to find out what Mark is doing. So I, I have a device or I have a software that can actually track down what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean? Exactly. That is the complicated part of it. Like. Mm -hmm really understanding whatever is taking place. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to look at, for example, simple things like videos. Uh, yeah. Uh, either video taken, um, how much a video is taken uh, on mobile phones or on CCTV cameras or just on the normal video camera mm -hmm. or uh, complicated ones like uh, reconnaissance uh, video or, uh, video capturings, like when we are using synthetic aperture ranger systems and all yeah. that. Is but those are now complicated ones, but we want to narrow it down to the very common one that you normally do outside there. Okay, yeah. so is it different from, uh, say, you know, today we have a very uh, interesting softwares that yeah. mirror people's, uh, you know, messages on the cell phone, can even see exactly what you are doing. When yeah. you type a word, they're able to see that. Yeah. Is this what you are talking about as well with this uh, new technology you're just about exactly. to demonstrate to us? What happens mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, as long as somebody, uh, when somebody gets uh, certain information, yeah. whether it's breaking the firewalls, or of a certain information system, whether mm -hmm. it's mobile, your mobile phone mm -hmm. or, or wherever you are. Somebody can install what is referred to as um, executable codes, yeah. either on a memory card or inside your mobile phone or whichever. Those ones can act as surveillance. But again, um, now working with that is a little more complex because uh, it's not just for the ordinary people that who, who do that, yeah. but it's um, for the experts who do that probably too get certain information. Mm -hmm. But now when we look at um, uh, situations, especially the cu current situations, for example, when we look at the Bungoma James Bond and all, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. James Bond and all that, mm -hmm. the first video that appeared was taken on a mobile phone. Yeah. yeah. When you look at um, the uh, uh, Kinango incident that took place when a pilot pushed a woman and all that, yeah. the first video to, uh, that appeared on social media and everywhere mm -hmm. else, was recorded on a mobile phone. So the challenge we have today is that our courts of law are not really adaptive to electronic evidence, in this case pictures uh, or videos because uh, of various reasons. One of them is actually uh, Photoshop, yeah. I guess, because uh, someone is able to doctor certain information and actually make it seem real or make it look real. So how do we actually use this information mm. uh, on ele as electronic evidence without mm. really um, doctoring information exactly yeah now for especially when it comes to the courts and all that mm -hmm. uh, what you need to understand is that there are parameters of operations yeah and some of these parameters include what video is admissible in court as an evidence mm -hmm. not every other video can be admitted or reduced in the court as an evidence but there is um, a formula for what I, I would call a formula but it's a code mm -hmm. for the expert it's a code for gauging what amount uh, what kind of videos is admissible. Right. It's referred to as optical coherence uh, tomography. Mm -hmm. Now, optical OCT helps us to understand which quality of video or which circumstance mm -hmm. of a video can be admitted or, or can be adduced in a court as an evidence. And this includes certain calculations depending on which country you come from. There are some countries that have certain calculation using the, certain, the, the same formula to gauge the bite rate of that video yeah. and to gauge the algorithms of that video. Mm -hmm. It's a, a little bit complex, but it's, uh, it can be done. And when it's done, it helps us to understand exactly what happened in that video mm -hmm. and ask whether this video can really meet the requisite um, kind of standards that have been set by the laws of the country or the policies of the court. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, uh, search engines like Google are coming up with, uh, say, uh, verifiers for pictures, for videos, and such like information. Mm -hmm. um, but just using this um, mm -hmm. 
software here. Mm. Just show us exactly what do you now, do, what can you do with it, and what can you what, not do with it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What we want to do very first is mm -hmm. the fact that uh, we want to take a, a case study. And the case study um, involves the, the pilot who pushed a lady in, uh, in Kinango, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nduru, Nduru Njeru yes. area. Mm -hmm. When DP, I think it was around uh, February when uh, DP William Ruto was stuck in there. Yeah. And then uh, what, uh, the video was recorded when this pilot very, was very furious than doing this. Yeah. Now what people need to understand is first of all what really took place at that place. What took place at that place is the fact that these people traveled right from Nairobi. Mm -hmm. To Kinango, yes, exactly. Uh, Ndurunyeru, mm -hmm. where they went. To. Now, Ndurunyeru is around seven kilometers, uh, eighty-seven to be precise. It is eighty-seven kilometers. Eighty-seven kilometers yeah, yeah. from Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when uh, a VIP is being taken somewhere is quite different from uh, what happens when a normal person like me and you is yeah. being taken somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the fact that. DP president, uh, Deputy President William Ruto is a VIP. Mm -hmm. uh, there, was a, there was certain information that was shared, especially with the control tower, to the police, officer who were, uh, police officers who were down there and all that. Now, when these people take off from Nairobi to the destination where they were, they were going to, mm -hmm. it should be well understood th uh, that even in the area where they were going to land, there are certain measures that were supposed to be. Okay, I understand. And that is, yeah. uh, I think, the technical detail that yeah. we're looking at. Yeah. But uh, from the outlook of this, yeah. what can we do with this? How can we use it for the greater good without really manipulating it for all the wrong reasons? Exactly. What can this software do? Now, for this, this for example, first of all, mm -hmm. this will give you an indication. Um, This software will give you an indication, first of all, mm -hmm. to give you the circumstance mm -hmm. in terms of or where they traveled from yeah. to where they went to. Okay. Now, when they traveled from Nairobi to this place, it's an indication that this distance they covered. What happened when they were covering that distance? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can also give you the live traffic on whatever was taking place in terms of the number of people all and right, all let, that. Let's but, take a look at that. Uh, on live traffic. Yeah. When it's connected to a net, it should be showing. But um, um, yeah, so it also gives you an option of understanding the GPS in terms of the location, the exact place where the, the circumstance took place. Oh, well, so you yeah. can relate the video mm -hmm. to the GPS location where exactly it took place. Because when providing an evidence, especially a video evidence, you must be very exact. Mm -hmm. You must be very exact in terms of features, in terms of demographics, in terms of topography, in terms of humidity, in terms of the temperature, and they must match exactly what really happened in the video. All right, so yeah. let's just imagine I have a cell phone here and yeah. uh, I record a video yeah. right here. Yeah. And maybe it's just picturing what exactly we are doing inside here. And mm. maybe for some reason we have to use it as evidence mm. um, in the courts of law. Uh, people will wonder, how does a 30-second video uh, play part in video evidence in, say, a court of law? And uh, are there any demographics that one needs to actually go through uh, to make sure that this has been authenticated? Because if we're looking at a software like this, that yeah. it pretty much... For me, I find that if it's going to just give distance and give exact location and give um, exact number of people and traffic and how many people were there at the time something was happening, then there's something that is uh, missing a little bit. Because what about if the information is doctored? No, that is why you have to see the, the physical and the... Uh, the, the non-physical mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. The video here will refer to us what we see actually in the actual sense. Yeah. But there is the, the invisible that you can't see. Mm -hmm. Now that invisible must match the exact video mm -hmm. that is there. Mm -hmm. For example, when we're talking about a given number of people, if somebody writes a report and presents that report concerning a given video as an evidence to a court of law, yeah. that person will be taken to task to answer questions concerning the very specific and that is why softwares like this are very much important. All right, so what's the software called? 
Uh, okay, it's just a distance formula cal calculator. Distance formula calculator, yeah, all right. That gives, um, yeah. We might not have a lot of time to really wind this in its entirety, mm -hmm. but don't you think that um, there needs to be some sort of evidence as well that is factored in here um, to show maybe witnesses, that there were yeah. a number of witnesses um, that were present at a certain location when something was taking place. That's there, yeah. but you know, technology normally complement each other. Mm -hmm. For example, when, we are, when you want an easy, uh, an easy way of running through the circumstance using this technology, mm -hmm. it's very much easier using this. Yeah. But again, the complex part of it that will complement this one is probably using the satellite technology, using yeah. the very... Um, uh, uh, like the Google Earth mapping systems and, uh, and uh, geopol systems and all that. Those ones will help people get the actual sense of whatever is happening. Right. Now, this can accomplish whatever the satellite will not accomplish. All right. How but soon do you think it can be used in the court of law? Can it be used at the moment? Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. All right. We look forward to that. But thanks a lot, Mark. We appreciate <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the information given. So it's uh, a distance tracking software that is able to mark the exact time, the exact location, and maybe even figure out the traffic yeah. uh, around a certain area for where uh, a certain incident could have happened. So, uh, you know, with all that's going on around uh, the country and also beyond, one might actually need to factor in video evidence and electronic evidence as well. Uh, we've been speaking to Marco Bauer, who is from the Standard Digital Department here at the Standard Group. And, uh, well, he does so many things, I guess, electronic evidence and investigation as well as just part of what he does at the Standard Digital Department.